Hi, I'm Darren Walker. Tonight on Inside Louisiana Baseball, we recap the 2019 spring football game with Dan McDonald and Gerald Broussard. And later, freshman track star Hannes Berger relives his phenomenal performance at the Sunbelt Indoor Track and Field Championships. But first, I sit down with baseball coach Tony Robichaud to discuss the weekend series with South Alabama and more. You're watching Inside Louisiana Baseball. Welcome to Inside Louisiana Baseball. Darren Walker joined, as always, by the head coach, Tony Robichaux. And, Coach, let's uh, recap this past week, another uh, five-game week for you. Uh, we'll start with Louisiana Tech. You jumped on them a little bit early in the first inning with a couple of runs, but really it was all Bulldogs after that. You had them in your sights in the seventh inning with uh, when you were down only by three with two runners on and two out. You just couldn't cash in right there, and then they kind of pulled away in the end. Yeah, you know, we got behind early, and we just we just didn't set a good tempo in the middle of the week games, both of them, actually. Mm -hmm. We set poor tempos on the mound, and um, when you do that, you're going to have to play catch-up. We had some opportunities, like you said, along the way, but we had the bases loaded one time with one out and didn't score. And so, you know, we, 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 just, we just put the hitters behind early, and we fought to try to get back up, and we finally kind of caught up a little bit, but then they pulled away again. They... They're a good hitting team, and you, you've got to pitch well against them to keep them down. And we did that over there, went to extras with them. They got us, but we had our opportunities there, too. Uh, with runners at second and third and one out and couldn't cash in. So when that happens, you don't pitch well and you don't cash in when you have a chance to cash in. More times than not, you're going to lose. Yeah, um, almost the same story. The next night, a much uh, lower scoring game, but McNeese, McNeese jumps out to a 6 to nothing lead, and you cut that in half. Uh, in the third inning, you got some really good uh, efforts in relief pitching to keep it within striking distance. But again, you had a couple of chances to maybe chip into the lead or maybe deliver a big blow. And again, it just didn't happen. No, that's one of the things that we've kind of struggled with all year, you know, is our batting average is not very good with runners in scoring position. And we have a tendency to leave some guys out there. And, uh, you know, that, that's, that's tough to do. Uh, you know, when you're playing close, sometimes it doesn't kill you as much because you only got to get maybe one run somewhere throughout the ball game to win that ball game but when you get behind early like we did with multiple uh, three run innings now it, 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 the difference makers you got to do some damage when you get a chance to do damage and and we didn't so both those games unlike the week before we pitched better we hit better and we had two wins this week we ended up 0-2 in the middle of the week. Uh, let's go to South Alabama game one on Friday night. Austin Perrin gets the call on Friday night and I thought he looked pretty good at times in the early innings but when he made a mistake South Al really kind of made him pay with a couple of of home runs. Well, what what hurts you is, you know, the solo home run never hurts you. You know, it's the it's the multiple run home run that hurts you in, in this game. And he'd given up a solo, which wasn't bad, you know, mm -hmm. recalibrate, move on. But then we got a walk and then another homer. Well, that turned into a two-run homer. So we could have cut that to two. Then we scored two. So you know what? Uh, hang on from there and work. And then we get around the middle innings and we just mismanage an inning really bad. Wilson's probably one of the best hitters in our conference mm -hmm. in the leadoff spot and you know we had preached going into this game plan you know we got to get the people out in front of him and you know we, we we get the eight hole hitter one two and then we hit him and then the nine hole hitters bunting and when you bunt you're playing for one run so you want to try to get the out and if they get that one run well then it's it's one run don't mm -hmm. not defend the bunt because that turns into a three run inning and of course we walk the guy trying to bunt and then you do the the, 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 the thing you shouldn't have done, you mismanaged eight, the nine hole hitter in front of Wilson and now you've got to pitch to him and he hits the ball out of the ballpark and so and he gives his team momentum. You know, he's that type of hitter. You have to keep track of him in the lineup and then Saturday and Sunday we flipped our script and we pitched better and we got the eight nine hole hitters out. We were able to intentionally walk him all day and pitch around him for the mm -hmm. next two days and he became a non factor. Right. And then of course we won both those games. Yeah, you go to uh, Saturday's game, game two. Um, you know, we talked last week a little bit about the self-inflicted wounds, and Brandon Young came out and, and had a couple of those. But, boy, he really bounced back 
uh, kept you guys, uh, again, within striking distance, and then you guys took advantage of some things that South Al did wrong. Well, I think that's why both clubs are not where we normally are. You know, both of us have higher standards than where we are. And, um, but, it, but you can see what, what happens when you walk a lot of people and hit a lot of people and give up free bases. It leads to inconsistencies. And so, um, you know, Brandon hit a guy and then walked two. And then all of a sudden, the guy filleted one down the line. That one little hit does a lot of damage. Three runs, in fact. And that's tough to do is to get three runs on one hit, unless the ball leaves the ballpark. And, but it's the free bases leading up to the fillet down the line. And so, you know, I went down to the dugout and just told him, I said, hey, look, man, that's all they did was fillet a ball down the line. The nine hole hitter, he was late as heck on your fastball. You're beating everybody with your fastball. It's just don't walk people. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's what you've got to shut off. And I said, you know, don't force our bullpen right here. You know, get out, back out because you're beating them. It just doesn't look like that on the school board. Don't pay attention to the school board. We talk about that all the time. You know, play the game, not the score. Mm -hmm. And so he went out and recalibrated himself and really got going and shut off all the walks. And so the score came down. And then behind there, you know, Armstrong came in. We like throwing Armstrong underneath after we throw him. Uh, young because Young is so tall and he pitches at the top of the strike zone uh, and he's got a lot of high spin rate on his fastball and so he can literally throw it by people and uh, not many people can pitch at the top of the strike zone but he can and then we wanted to bring a guy in that bottom the strike zone out to change their eyes and mm -hmm. so he came in throw two quality innings because Gunner was going to be on a six out save this week he'll be on a nine out save he's slowly building his pitch counts back up to come back up and start so uh, Armstrong was really big that he was able to come in and shut out those two innings so we don't need to bring Gunner in any earlier than we needed to. All right. Game three, the rubber game, a uh, beautiful day for baseball yesterday uh, in, in, in the ballpark. And uh, Jack Burke was on the hill. He gave you an outstanding effort, six innings, only one run, seven strikeouts really bouncing back from that illness that kept him out for a little while. Definitely. All his previous starts were really good. You know, I mean, you know, you hate to look at ifs, you know, but, you know, that's what we had planned to start this season, opening day, was Gunner and All-American on Friday night and then Brandon Young on Saturday and then Jack Burke on Sunday. And, you know, you start your season and, and Brandon gives you one start in the first half. Jack doesn't give you anything in the first half and then Gunner gives you one or two stars but then fights inflammation and has to now be moved to two innings on a weekend and so it disrupts so much of your stuff and so now we're kind of lining back up a little bit. Jay Schultz is better out of the bullpen. He threw really well on Sunday behind Jack and now with Gunner building his pitch count back up hopefully we don't run out of time but if we can eventually get back to Gunner on Friday and Brandon on Saturday and uh, Burke on Sunday that's the way we wanted to come out opening day. All right, thanks a lot for the time, Coach. We'll visit with Coach Robichaud later to talk about the upcoming schedule. But next, Dan McDonald and Gerald Broussard take a look at the 2019 spring game. Intact! Intact! Together! Together! This! This! F! F! Tough! Intact! Intact! If you're happy and you know it's Zydeco. If you're happy and you know it's Zydeco. If you're happy and you know it, then your feet will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it's Zydeco. If you're happy and you know it's Mange. If you're happy and you know it's Mange. If you're happy and you know it, nothing ever will help you show it. If you're happy and you know it's Mange. Mange.
Welcome back to Inside Louisiana Baseball. Time now to recap the 2019 spring football game with Dan McDonald and Gerald Broussard. Oftentimes, a spring football game comes as sort of an anticlimactic ending to spring football practice. We didn't have that here today at the Moncaw Indoor Center as the Raging Cajuns wrapped up their spring football drills, and they did it in a thrilling fashion. The Vermilion team scoring on the last play of the game to take a 34-31 win. I'm Dan McDonald, along with my partner, Gerald Broussard, and G. I'll be honest, this was a lot more than I expected out of a spring game. Yeah, it really was. It was a lot of fun. There was some, some explosive plays, some excitement. We had a couple plays on defense. We, we uh, you know, saw some names we had thought we'd see do some good things, saw some new names that we had hoped and heard about, and I think they lived up to it. So, And the other thing was is we only had the one turnover, and that was an interception. Uh, no fumbles. It was, a, it was a pretty clean game. And, and two two-minute drives executed, one by each team, to get some scores in there at the end of the game and keep it exciting. And it was exciting for the people that were inside the Moncaw Indoor Facility. Moved inside because of the threat of some inclement weather and I think worked out like a charm. I wouldn't mind coming back in here for more football later on. No, at first and it was a little bit warm, you know, when you first get in here because it's not air conditioned but but I think that it, it cool, things kind of, I guess it got cloudy outside. Things cooled off a little bit. And the game took over. We, we, we got excited about the game and excited about football. And, and, you know, the atmosphere was there because it's enclosed. Had we been in Cajun Field, uh, you know, the, the crowd wouldn't have been near as involved. Th this was an exciting atmosphere. It was a lot of fun. Let's talk about first the players that we expected to see and that we expected to do some good things. Quarterback Levi Lewis, quarterback the Vermillion team, and he and Jamarcus Bradley were just a solid connection all day long. Jamarcus ended up with several catches, one touchdown. Well, and the Vermillion team was the quote-unquote number one offense, so you had Jamarcus on the outside, you had Elijah in the backfield, you had and, and Elijah and and, and uh, Kale in the backfield with Levi. Levi did a good job distributing the football. Uh, big guys up front, man, they're, they're, they just play really well and and when you got matchups problems you exploit them that's what the offense was able to do today Cajuns have all five of those offensive linemen back and that did a lot of good things for both Elijah Mitchell and Raymond Colley both of them showed some flashes this is a very very deep Cajun running back core yeah it really is and we heard uh, the coaches and the running backs talk about in a fantasy draft who do you take and nobody picked anybody Neither would you expect anybody to, but I don't know that you can. You know, they're just really good. We saw some young guys on the white team, too, that impressed also. Some of those guys, a lot of people wanted to see uh, uh, Avi Magale, the new signee quarterback who, you know, you don't want to adorn anybody with a number right now, but he sort of has that look of that number two quarterback, and I think he may be a factor before this is all over with. Yeah, number two that can win some games, and that's what you're hoping for. Does he have the skill set to be able to go in and win a game for you? Does he have the skill set to threaten to be the starting quarterback? And I think Ave showed that he does. Uh, once he gets a little better grasp of the offense, I know he knows where to make plays and get the ball to his playmakers, and, and we saw that today, but got a live arm. Look forward to seeing him. A couple of touchdown passes to Khalif Gossett, who showed that, I mean, he was a man out there. Yeah, player of the game. Player yeah. of the game, really was. Khalif, I mean, caught the deep ball a couple of times over people, caught a shallow crosser, showed a burst coming through it, uh, you know, was a good player for the white team, along with one of the guys we had heard about, Brian Smith Jr., you know, the receiver from Barb and Lake Charles, came out of Glendale Community College, big guy, Dan, big guy. We saw him there close, and uh, playmaker, did good. What about the two Smiths? You mentioned Brian Smith Jr. is going to step in and play some at wide receiver in his first year. Chris Smith is a guy trying to break into that running back core. Uh, it's going to be a tough row to hoe, but he showed some flashes. I, this guy's a very, very good football player. Well, and if, if something happens, knock on wood, you don't want it to happen, but if something happens and, and you have some kind of injury in there, you have depth coming from a really deep group that's even deeper now with a guy like Chris Smith. We knew about Johnson's ability to come in there and threaten, but now this guy we've heard about, and he lived up to it. Cajun offenses looked good really on both sides of the football. Defenses, that's a question mark. That's still pretty much a work in progress, it looks like. We had a guy, a couple guys in the black that were out there still playing, and I say in the black, I mean, I'm, I'm looking at Michael Jacquet walking off the field, played a lot of plays in there in a black jersey, non-contact, but he's going to be a player for you. Boudreaux's going to be a player for you. You're going to get some guys in there. We didn't have Zion Hill today. Going to have some guys up front. Going to have some guys. Deuce Wallace didn't play today. Uh, and so that defense will be okay. Some familiar names. Looking for the new names. That's what we want to see, the new names to come up. Garrow didn't play today either. So some of those names that we know are good, 
they'll be good again. It's the new ones that we're looking for. A lot of guys injured that didn't get a chance really to show themselves today, but they'll be back this fall when the Raging Cajuns return to practice getting ready for that August 31st opener against Mississippi State. Gee, I had a great time today. Yeah, we can do this a lot. Now, I promise you, we can play. Now, this is where we won't play on Saturdays, but we'll be close enough, and this was a lot of fun. We hoped we'd see some excitement, some explosiveness. We saw that today, good atmosphere, and it, yeah, let's do this more. For my partner, Gerald Broussard, I'm Dan McDonald. The Vermilion team wins it today, 34-31, in the Raging Cajuns annual Vermilion White Spring Football Game. Next on Inside Louisiana Baseball, we meet freshman track standout, Hannes Berger. Look at me in the eye. They bleed just like you bleed. There is no apprehension. There is no fear. Bottom line, they gotta come to us to get this done. All right, we decide what happens. We dictate what happens on that field today. Together on three. One, two, three, together. together. To perform, you need speed, skill, strength. With every muscle, every move, you push your body to reach its full potential. But sometimes, you just can't push through the pain. That's when you know it's time to address it. So when injury puts you on the sidelines, trust us to get you back in the game. Lord Sports Care, the team behind your team. At the University of Louisiana at Lafayette, our Raging Cajun spirit goes beyond athletics. Welcome back to Inside Louisiana Baseball. Let's meet Hannes Berger as he relives his phenomenal performance at the Indoor Sunbelt Conference Track and Field Championships. My name is Hannes Burger and I'm a freshman on the Louisiana track team. Here comes Berger making the push to the lead. Hannes Berger with one lap to go. Here in the men's 3,000 meter, he is separating from the pack and lapping the field here in Birmingham. It started with cross country, it was kind of rough because it was a short preparation for it. Um, since we have nationals just in July back home, I started cross country preparation mid-August. So I had a decent cross country season, but it was always, I thought it was a little too short preparation to really show my full potential in cross country. And then after cross country, I get into a little higher mileage, build a base to get ready for indoor. And in the last three, four, five weeks before indoor conference, we just worked on speed and speed endurance. And it worked out pretty well with peaking at the right moment for um, indoor conference with getting two titles, what's really amazing. I didn't think I could get these two titles. I was. I was seated first in the 3K, so there was a chance to make it, but it's still hard then in the race to really get it, even if you're the top seed first. In the 3K, I was kind of confused since we didn't have a watch on the finish line. I get into the race and I was looking for our pace because I expected a fast race actually for like 8.15 and then there was no watch and I was running just, okay, I'm just going with a pack. I don't really know where I'm at right now, what pace we were going. It, it feels like decent fast, not all out, but still fast. And then after a few laps, I found that I can watch on, uh, see the time on the wall. So I watched there every time we got there. And then I was just in the pack, running with it. And I don't know, just with 400 to go, I just decided to now make the move, go all out. And I was, I really uh, expected someone to go with me, but no one did. So I just brought the 3K home. And then the next day, the mile wasn't the very best race. I don't know, I don't know, I don't really know what happened in there. I just didn't get the legs, didn't get the speed at the end to make it. 
And right after that, I cool down to get my legs a little, get the lactate a little out of it and warmed up for the uh, 5K. Said, okay, I'm going for 14, 45, 15 minutes, just going my pace. If someone goes out 14, 15, I can't go with them. I will kill myself. Just go with your pace and see how it works out. And with 600 to go, I think I finally get to the top group and I just stayed there and it felt kind of easier at the end of the race um, because I was like, okay, that's now just five laps and then I'm completely done. So I stayed in that pack and for the last 200, I just gave all out and was so happy that I could win that second title. It means a lot to be the top scorer in my first really uh, track meet over here. Uh, we don't have these awards in Germany since ev everything is more individually, not with points for the team and everything. So right before the race, uh, my coach told me I need to beat uh, Justin to make it because he had one more point than I had and was in the race too. And there was another UTA guy who was already supposed to get 22.5 points. So I needed to win that race. And at the beginning, it didn't look like I could win it. I just stayed with my plan, kept going with my pace. And when I really crossed the finish line first and knew I, I really got the most points of all athletes here, there was an amazing feeling. Next on Inside Louisiana Baseball, head coach Tony Robichaux rejoins us to preview tonight's matchup with LSU and more during a busy week for baseball. In tag, in tag, together, together, this, this, The Learfield IMG College Directors' Cup, the highly recognized mark of distinction in college athletics across all divisions, both men's and women's sports. Follow your favorite team's pursuit for excellence in this prestigious annual award through the directorscup.com, USA Today, or L Directors' Cup on Twitter. Learfield IMG College Directors' Cup, the crowning achievement in college athletics since 1993. Welcome back to Inside Louisiana Baseball. Time now to look at the week ahead for the Raging Cajuns. And Coach, uh, only one midweek game this week, but it's a big one, not just because of the opponent, but the event itself, the 16th annual Wally Pontiff Classic. And I know it's something that you guys uh, really enjoy being a part of. We do. You know, we know the Pontiffs very well. And, um, you know, I coached against Wally, um, his son. And, you know, again, it, it means a lot to me just simply because I watched my mom and dad lose a child. And, um, you know, when, when we lost Jody, I saw, you know, the pain and the heartache that a parent goes through when they have to bury a child. And that was the toughest eulogy I ever had to do because they couldn't do it. And um, to know that, and you don't want your son's legacy to die. And so they, they started that game right after Wally had passed and uh, they use all that money for the Wally Pontiff Foundation. So um, we've, we've, we've loved going there for that reason. Uh, we love going there because we draw a good crowd. Mm -hmm. He's tried other teams along the way and uh, things just haven't worked out as good as they do when we go down there. So we're just really glad to be able to be part of that. Then at the same time, you get to play a team that's well coached and a very good team. You get to play an SEC opponent and then you also get to get caught in a venue 
uh, where it feels like a regional and uh, that's good for all our younger pitchers especially this year because we've got a lot of inexperienced pitchers and it gives them the opportunity to get in there and feel that type of pressure so that hopefully we can turn this season around and get to a regional and then now they're a little bit more calmer when they get to that regional because they've been in that atmosphere already. Right, the Shrine on Airline as they, as they call it, uh, that game coming up on CST here you know, just a little bit at seven o'clock. Um, then things really happen fast for you because you only have uh, one day really to get ready for uh, UTA. Uh, those games are gonna be played on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday of this week because of Easter weekend. Uh, it means you're gonna get back home late tonight and then have to jump on the bus and, and head over to Texas. Um, and then <laughs> you, you're facing a really good UTA team. They're playing well right now. They are. And uh, one good thing is we've played well on the road this year. We've swung the bat good on the road. And I think our pitching's lined up better now. I think, uh, you know, we've got uh, Lamont out of the back of the pen now. We've got Gunner out of the back of the pen now. you got Schultz coming out of the pen. So early in the year we hit well, but then we let games get away from the 7th, 8th, and 9th. Now we're more protected in the 7th, 8th, and 9th with the guys that are coming out of the pen. You don't have to rely so much on true freshmen. So what's good is a lot of the freshmen had to throw early, even though they got roughed up, it did give give them some experience. So now if we do have to call back on them, they've got more experience than they did in the first half. Ironically, uh, their best player is Connor Obe, and he's hitting 357, but he hasn't been in the lineup for the last five games or so. Ironically, they've won all five of those games. They beat Baylor, uh, swept Arkansas State, um, so you, you're going to have your hands full this weekend. Yeah, there's no doubt, you know, but, you know, the, the, the Sun Belt's always been good. It's kind of, um, there's a lot of parity this year in it, but that's there's parity in college baseball all over the place right now for the last two to three years, and the way the kids are playing underneath this is creating a lot of parity in the game. So so you have to just be ready every weekend, no matter who you play in. Uh, you look at Little Rock, you know what they're doing now. You know their hitters are starting to settle in and hit. They're starting to win games. So there's nobody you really can take a night off anyway. It's Sunbelt Baseball. you got to be ready to go. Coming up next on Inside Louisiana Baseball, a look at the upcoming schedule. Look at me in the eye. They bleed just like you bleed. There is no apprehension. There is no fear. Bottom line, they gotta come to us to get this done. All right, we decide what happens. We dictate what happens on that field today. Together on three. One, two, three, together. together. Residence halls are very new, very clean, very nice. A lot of people get suite style rooms, which are two person to one room. And some nice perks to the residence halls are free laundry. And they even have an app, so it'll tell you when your laundry is ready. So that's sweet. They have weekly housekeeping, so you don't have to worry about your bathroom. There's such a variety of food options on and off campus. You can get anything from Chick-fil-A and Pizza Hut to crawfish etouffee and jambalaya. The meal plan is actually included in your room, so you're never going hungry when you live on campus. When there's something going on on campus, you never have to worry about how you're going to get there because you're literally steps away. You can just walk. If I pull a late night studying or writing a paper, I can take those few extra minutes to sleep in because my class is 10 minutes away. Well, we have an amazing opportunity for our first year students where they can live in the residence halls and be a part of a living learning community. So these are small communities where students can make friends very quickly with other students that they have a lot in common with. For example, Students who like the arts, they can live in Gateway to the Arts, and then they take classes together. Building relationships has been just as easy as inviting people to go out to eat in the dining hall or inviting someone to study together in the library or the community room. Thanks for joining us for this week's Inside Louisiana Baseball. Time now for a look at the week ahead.